Joining us right now is former Fed Vice Chairman Roger Ferguson. He's the former president and CEO of TIAA, and now he's a CNBC contributor. And, and Roger, this number has people really thinking, um, this is it. This is the biggie. It's going to determine whether or not the Fed's going to be starting to slow its pace. If it comes in, let's say, at 7.5 percent, what happens? If it comes in at 7.0 percent, what, what are the Fed's takeaways from each of those numbers? Well, first, um, I think this number has maybe a longer-term impact, but not an immediate impact on the next meeting. I think for the upcoming meeting over the next day or two, it's going to be a 50 basis point tightening. It's been signaled, and I don't think this number is going to change anything uh, in that regard. And in part, think about it, it starts with a seven handle. When they talk about inflation getting down to two, there's a long way to go. Having said that, I think what is going to be at play is what does the next, what do the next two or three or four meetings look like? Uh, 25 basis points at the next one or two, 25 basis points at the next three or four. And I think the, you know, the inflation picture that's starting to shape up will have an impact on you know, those meetings that are further out, which obviously will also be important to market expectations. Yeah, I think the market is not anticipating that the Fed's going to do anything other than 50 basis points. But if this number comes in, let's say 7.0 percent, even 6.9 percent on a year-over-year -year basis, you're right, that's a hot number. But the market's going to look at that and say, OK, inflation is finally breaking. You are finally going to get some relief. And the market always acts uh, looking pretty far down the road. That would be their sign that, OK, it's off to the races because the Fed is not going to continue at this pace. Right, exactly. And that, as we've talked about a few times, is a double-edged sword from the standpoint of the Fed, right? right? They are thinking a great deal about what they're calling financial conditions. So, you know, I think, you know, if, if the market is, quote, off to the races, the Fed is going to have to yet again remind them that there's still much work to be done and there will be, again, a disconnect where the market is hot, financial conditions, you know, ease up more than the Fed would like, and then we'll be back into the cycle of Fed officials saying, oh, still a great deal to go. Um, and so I think there's a little bit of a, a you know, the, the usual dilemma that the Fed is confronting when the market being very, very forward looking, as you say, and hoping for good news and betting on good news as a reason to rally uh, creates a, a, a much more challenging condition, set of financial conditions for the Fed to manage against. Roger, I, I feel like you are a voice of reason. You're almost warning investors don't take this as a huge sign to run things up. It's almost like uh, the parents, the Fed's going to have to look in the backseat of the car and say, don't make me come back there. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it's, it's an analogy that unfortunately is, is, is apt. And I'm not suggesting that investors are like petulant kids because they're not. But, you know, I think the challenge here is there are two separate forces going on. There's the actual inflation, and inflation, as the Fed expects it to unfold, and they have a job to get that under control. And at the same time, investors are, are you know, projecting into the future, bringing that back into the present, and saying, well, if interest rates are going to be lower because inflation is cooling, that means that, you know, every dollar of, uh, of profit is worth more. And I think that's, that's the dilemma that's, that's confronting here. The Fed is looking at one set of numbers and thinking about what their job has to be. Investors are looking at the same set of numbers and saying, gee, that's going to be good news for us if and there's any sense that interest rates are going to slow. Um, but I think the uh, investors are, are in some sense ignoring the big picture, which is that interest rates are still going to rise even if it's at a slower pace. Uh, and the final point I'd make, Becky, is there's in the market – uh, a disconnect between the market and the Fed on when the Fed is likely to ease. You know, the market is expecting an easing in the, in the back half of 23. I don't think the Fed's uh, ready to even contemplate that at this stage. And so there are a couple of dis disconnects between the market and the Fed.